my job is working with students. Uh, we have a, such a diverse group of students on our programme that I get to meet people from all sorts of different backgrounds with different perspectives and I've learned so much from the students on my programme. I also love the um, intellectual challenges that um, keeping up to date with my discipline uh, brings and um, I love the fact that the academic year um, is, while it's cons constant from one year to the next, each week, each month brings its own challenges and, and different skill sets if you like. There are obviously lots of challenges in any job um, related to what I've just said, the um, diverse groups of students and um, whilst they're wonderful to work with can bring their own challenges, um, lots of them have personal problems, personal difficulties that stop them from getting smoothly, progressing smoothly through the course and understanding the processes that exist um, in the university to help um, and know when to refer students onto those services rather than tackling them yourselves. That can, that can be quite difficult. Um, some of the challenges related to teaching and learning are perhaps some of the digital uh, media that, um, that's available now, some of the digital technologies. There should be opportunities, there's some excellent opportunities for us to really make our teaching and learning innovative and the learning experience exciting for students, but we do need to um, have time to access these technologies to develop the skills to understand how to employ them rather than just give them to the students and expect them to know what to do with them. We need to be able to build them in um, and use them um, so that they're pedagogically sound um, in terms of the way they're embedded within the curriculum. The, the advice I give to new teachers is to plan, learn how to plan your time. Um, it feels that um, it's very loosely planned but um, there's a lot of autonomy about, about how you go about approaching your basket of duties and you need to be able to plan so that you get a good balance to your work so that teaching doesn't swap your research and research doesn't swap your teaching. You've got to give time to both because research has to inform teaching um, if it's going to work uh, practically. Uh, the other advice I'd give to um, new teachers is to uh, make sure you're reflective. In other words, just little things like when you're given a lecture, put some notes down very quickly on your um, that side of your lecture notes. Because it may be six months, maybe a year before you come to give that particular lecture again. And you will know at the end of that lecture what went well, what didn't go well, how you might change things, what interaction you might put in. Uh, during the lecture, and you, but you won't remember a year later, so do make sure that you do that as well. It's very tempting when you um, get up for the first time in front of a class, be it in a lecture or a tutorial, to be so concerned with how you're coming across um, and to, to therefore get nervous about what it is you're doing. But one of the things I think you need to do is to remember it's not about you, it's about your students, it's about the learner. Is the learner learning? Um, what is it that they're doing? Don't concentrate on what you're doing, concentrate on what it is that they're doing. So for new lecturers, new members of staff, um, it can be quite an isolating job to begin with and you will work in a very small context, maybe just with your students, with a, a small group of staff. Um, have you given any thought to how you might expand um, your network of friends, your network of peers, find out what's going on in other uh, parts of the university, how you can collaborate with other people maybe in teaching and learning or through research and um, what, what are you going to do to develop those networks and what, how might they benefit you? Okay.